Now we come to William Shakespeare, who is without question the greatest writer of all time. That is, his works are the greatest works ever written. But like Columbus, he is a man of mysteries. Mark Twain, Mark Twain wrote, you can trace the life histories of the whole of them, the world's celebrities save one, far and away the most colossal prodigy of the entire accumulation, Shakespeare. About him you can find out nothing, nothing of even the slightest importance, nothing worth the trouble of stowing away in your memory, nothing that even remotely indicates that he was ever anything more than a distinctly commonplace person, an actor of inferior grade, a small trader in a small village that never regarded him as a person of any consequence and had forgotten him before he was fairly cold in his grave. We can go to the records and find out the life history of any renowned racehorse of modern times, but not Shakespeare. <clears throat> there are many reasons why, but there is one that is worth all the rest of the reasons put together. He hadn't any history to record. So says Mark Twain. Well, William Shakespeare was a resident of Stratford. He couldn't read or write. But somehow he acquired a substantial sum of money, bought an interest in the Blackfriars Theatre in 1589, and by 1602 he was a wealthy man. He went into business as a moneylender and died at the age of 52 after a drinking bout with Ben Johnson. <clears throat> the plot thickens. <laughs> Shakespeare left nothing to posterity, not a book, a desk, or a manuscript, no library, and no shred of personal correspondence. The only thing the illustrious William Shakespeare wrote for certain were the signatures on his will. <laughs> According to J.P. Baxter, author of The Greatest of Literary Problems, <laughs> The vocabulary of an English peasant, a Stratford villager, would be less than 400 words. The author of the Shakespeare works employed a vocabulary of 21,000 words. 21,000 words. You'd have to be the incarnate word itself to know that many words. <clears throat> Three times the number used by Milton, a large number of which never had been used by any previous English writer. Who wrote the works attributed to Shakespeare? Some people just still won't believe that Francis Bacon wrote those works. Well, the Elizabethan poet had much in common with the famous admiral. He had a secret identity, led a double life, and wrote in code. Whoever this Elizabethan poet was. Shakespeare, according to one school of thought, used not one cipher, but a variety of codes, the biliteral cipher, the great cryptogram, anagrams and acrostic spellings, a numerical cipher, and a clock cipher. Entwined around the initial letter B on the title page of The Tempest is the real author's name, Francis Bacon. Why did Bacon hide his identity and write in code? Very simple, to save his life. For when the Shakespearean code is deciphered, it reveals that Sir Francis Bacon was the firstborn son of Queen Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen, and the Earl of Leicester. The decoded cipher in the 1623 folio reads, Queen Elizabeth is my true mother, and I am the lawful heir to the throne. Find the cipher story my books contain. It tells great secrets, every one of which if imparted openly, would forfeit my life. It is said that the works of Shakespeare were written by English, England's greatest group of intellectuals under Bacon's ingenious direction. Bacon called them his pens. Among them, Sir Walter Raleigh, Francis Drake, Edmund Spencer, Toby Matthews, John Donne, Ben Johnson, Launcelot Andrews, and George Withers. The Literary Rosy Cross, a secret literary society, was founded by Bacon. The members were sworn to the allegiance of Pallas Athena. <laughs> <laughs> Shakespeare.
She was usually placed on the Greek temples with a golden spear in her hand. When the morning rays of the sun glinted on the weapon, causing it apparently to tremble, the common people were in the habit of saying smilingly, Athena is shaking her spear again. She was thus known as the spear shaker, or the shaker of the spear. This was the goddess to whom Francis Bacon plighted his troth when a youth. The preceding lecture was given by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, world-renowned author and spiritual teacher. The Summit Lighthouse is an international spiritual organization dedicated to universal enlightenment. Founded in 1958, the Summit Lighthouse has been a beacon of truth to thousands worldwide and a leader in New Thought spirituality. The preceding program has been brought to you by the Summit Lighthouse. For more information, call 1-800-245-5445 or visit our website at www.tsl.org. Outside the USA, call 406-848-9500 or write to the Summit Lighthouse, 63 Summit Way, Gardner, Montana, 59030, USA.